Hi Flosstube, it's Lori McClary, textilist. Welcome to my channel. Hi Floss Tubies, it's Lori. Welcome to my channel. This channel is about cross stitch and quilting and sometimes other crafts. Uh, today we're going to be talking about some quilting and some cross stitch and I'm going to finish up the whip parade that I started in my last video of Count My Whips. This Today's whip parade is all about samplers, even though I did show a few small samplers in the last one, and there might be some small ones in this one, this group is loosely called Sampler Whip Parade. And then I might talk about a few plants that I have going forward into the fall because we're melting here in Central Oregon. Um, today is not too bad, it's gonna be in the high 80s. That's kind of my sweet spot, about 85 is, is really good. It'll be a little bit warmer than that. But um, <clears throat> coming next week, it's going to be back into the high 90s and even over 100. And I'm pretty much done with the really hot weather. Uh, I'm ready for fall. I'm ready for fall stitching. I'm ready for cooler weather and bright days. So let's go ahead and get started. First up, what I've been stitching on the last couple weeks. Um, not a whole lot of different pieces that I've been stitching on, but um, let's go ahead and show those. The first one is Roses for Ruby. I've gotten a little bit more progress on this one. I did end up having to rip out um, all of this rose and down here and go back because I was off a stitch and it just was not going to work. Um, with these kinds of motifs, you really can't fudge too much unless you're wanting to change the look but I did get more done on this I'm kind of um my my mojo for this piece is kind of petering out I hope that I find it because I did want to get it done this month but uh we'll see I'm not going to feel too terrible bad if I don't um I'm giving myself one more season if I don't without um without feeling bad about it. So my grandmother would have been 99 this year. She will be would have been 100 this coming year. So anywhere in that time frame, I'm feeling good. So Roses for Ruby. This is a Scarlet House um, chart. This is my working copy. This is what the original looks like. This is a 36 count weeks Aspen and I'm doing it in my own conversion of mostly um, Victoria Motto colors, which I matched to the DMC equivalent of this chart. And it is looking beautiful. I would like to get it done, but I'm not gonna feel bad if I don't, because as I mentioned in the intro, I'm really getting into <clears throat> wanting to stitch on fall things. Um, to that end, I spent a little bit of time on a whip that I showed you last week. This one is Little House Needleworks Pumpkin Hollow Farm. And I needed something easy to take to stitch group. This fit the bill. It's on a 32 count, I believe. Oh gosh, I should remember this because I just showed it to you last time. But it's a 32 count. I think it's a Doblin of some sort. Um, I don't recall the color. I got the house done um, during my stitch group it went pretty fast which leads me to believe that the rest of the stitch will actually go fast and I want to get this done simply because there's a lot of floss that I would like to free up for other um, fall stitching the other stitch um, this is a new start for me I'm joining Katie and Olivia Katie of uh, So Tattered and Olivia Pumpkin Hollow Quilts 
and I'm going to stitch uh, on the 13th and the 31st of each month the Plum Street Samplers Jack's Bash. This has been on my list and kitted up for, I had it all kitted up and ready to go last year and I didn't get it started, so I thought I would join them. Um, I've been wanting to start this for quite a while. And this is what I got done on the 31st. And I am loving this stitch. This is so pretty. It's going to be hard to put down um, after only stitching on it a couple days a month. So I'm doing this on um, 36 count Picture This Plus Bramble, which is a just a beautiful color. And I think it goes very well where you kind of get the contrast of the light and the dark, but it's not a stark white. And so these are the call for colors. And um, I'm, I'm really, really loving this. It may weasel its way into trying to get a finish before Halloween this year, but we'll see. I'm not going to push myself because I do have a lot of things on my agenda to work on between now and then. But just loving this. Really, really loving this. I love those colors. So that is the cross stitch that I worked on. Those are the whips that I worked on. I'm going to go ahead and switch gears. I'm going to show you the quilting I worked on, and then we're going to jump right back into the whip parade. So let me move some things around, and I'll be right back. Okie dokie. So I did a lot of sewing this um, the past couple of weeks. I've really been inspired watching Olivia uh, from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts and Katie from Sew Tattered. Um, who've been working on different quilts or showed different quilts. And I I actually sat down here in my studio and I made a list of all of my quilt whips. So of the ones that are here in the studio, there might be a couple more floating around somewhere. Um, I had 21 whips and I'm down to 19 whips. So I finished a few things and actually maybe... Maybe I'm down to 20 whips. I finished a few things that were really close to done. And um, I also made a list of all of my quilt kits, again, that I have in the studio. I know there's probably more floating around. So if you're interested in a quilt um, kit whip parade, let me know down below and I will do that. I think I did a small one sometime in the last year. I can't recall. I'd have to go back and look through my videos. But uh, I, I got to revisit a lot of my quilt kit whips and uh, I actually have kitted up a couple more just in the past couple of weeks because I have some plans for one of the retreat bedrooms that I, I just kind of wanted to get sorted out. So uh, again, if you're interested in a quilt kit whip parade, not necessarily a quilt whip parade, although I could do that as well, um, let me know in the comments below and we'll see what we can pull together. So the first thing I completed was a table runner and this is a table runner that's made with, let me get it up here, made with um, this product that I developed that I still haven't got on the market yet, but it's about doing really, really, really easy log cabins. And this is a log cabin table runner with a um, patriotic flare, an Independence Day flare. And it's not quilted yet here. Let me see if I can back up enough where you can see the majority of it. Um, I did this in homespuns with blues and reds and creams. And then I have this backing um, slated to go with it. So this is all ready to go. I've got my backing cut and uh, it's going to go on the long arm in the next couple of weeks. So I've got these three projects that I'm going to show you and they are ready to go. And I'm hoping to get at least a couple of them done before um, our next video or my next video so I can show you some completed quilts. <clears throat> this next one is called Solstice. And do I have the chart? I do. Hold, hold, please. Okay, this is a, it's not a chart, it's a pattern. This is a pattern and a kit that I bought at the Sew Expo in Puyallup uh, a really long time ago. In fact, uh, it says 2007, and I would say that that's the time period. Now, this is one layout of the quilt. This is when... Um, 
Batiks were really, really hot, and I have several quilts that are made in batiks. Um, so I've had this one sewn together and the blocks ready to be squared up for probably, let's see, 2007, at least 15, 16 years. Um, and I worked on it when I had my quilt retreat here when the ladies were here a couple weeks ago. And then I finally got the blocks, a layout that I liked and put together. And here it is. I'm not going to be able to show you everything. It's quite big. It's not, it's, it's bigger than, it's like a really big throw. So bigger than a twin, but um, this might give you some, let me back up here, some sense of the colors and what it looks like. So the layout that I chose, and it's a kind of a very organic swirl. No block is exactly alike. And you've got the swirl here. This is really hard to show. Um, <clears throat> here's the other side. So I plan on quilting this with a copper color metallic, which I think will show up beautifully on this quilt. And it's very abstract, it's real pretty. So I think I'm going to use um, like a swirl uh, pattern, some type of swirly pattern on this. Um, and we'll see how that comes out. And so next time when I show it when it's quilted, I'll, I will take pictures, I'll hang it on the wall so I can show you what it looks like all together. And this is the backing that I chose for that, the same colorways. I was a little concerned that this was not going to match anything I had, um, it being so old, but um, I laid it on my couch and interestingly enough, it looks really, really good. So th this is gonna be a fall quilt for me. Um, I think it's gonna look really pretty. So I finished putting that one together. And then the last one that I got finished putting together, I have shown this on this channel a couple times before, I believe. I've had it hung up in my prim room, just the top or part of the top hung up in my prim room. Um, and I finally got the borders put on. And this is a quilt called Auntie's Beanstalk. And I think it's by Front Porch, Lydia's Front Porch. I'll put the... the um, the name of it down below. I don't have the pattern cover here right now. My intent is to eventually make two of these, one for each bed in the prim room, but for right now, I'm just delighted that I finished this one. Finally got the borders on it, and I will get that put on the frame uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, my friend Lisa Kendra Stitcher is coming up to hang out with me for a week or so <clears throat> um, soon. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, that'll give me the opportunity to kind of show her how the long arm works. And then this is the backing that I've chose for this quilt. So super duper pleased uh, that I got those finished, kind of proud of myself that I got so many of them um, done and uh, really looking forward to getting those on the quilting frame and getting them quilted. So that's the quilting update, um, pretty short, and I'm going to go ahead and pause again, and then we'll get started on the whip parade. And yes, I did cut my bangs. I know I talked about it in the last video. I've actually cut my bangs twice in the last two weeks. My hair grows really fast in the summer. So anyway, let's wrap this part up and we'll go on to the whip parade. Okie dokie, buckle up. Here we go. So first up on um, my sampler whip parade, and remember, you'll want to count these. The point is to help me count these because I have a giveaway for the correct answer of all of my whips, the, the total uh, number of all of my whips, which means if you haven't already, go back and watch my previous video and um, you're going to add those two together. So this is part two. Uh, the first one up is a Scarlet House. It's Jane Cowie. And I don't have very much um, on this one. And I am stitching this one. <sighs> Who am I stitching this with? 
I'm stitching this with Christy um, at Daisy K Primitives. We started it together. I'm pretty sure she's a lot further along than I am. And I am stitching this on, oh golly, what am I stitching this on? I can't, oh, here we go. I am stitching this on a Lakeside Linen 46 count vintage meadow rue. And I have a little bit of the border started. I love this linen. Vintage Meadow Rue is one of my favorites. This one and Vintage Pearled Barley are right up there in the favorites. So I did test out one of the strawberries. I am not sure if I'm going to stick with those colors. And these strawberries have three colors. I don't know if you can tell the color change there. I'm not really wild about how orangey they look. That's just not my jam. And I did pick out a couple of um, more deep reds rather than the oranges. Um, and I have to test them out on another part of the linen to see if I'm gonna like those or not. I think, I think these are the three colors um, that it currently calls for. So I'm using needlepoint silks, as you can see here, um, and my very, very fancy floss bags. <laughs> I, I really don't like using floss bags. I like things to be hung up, but I could not bring myself to go and cut through these needlepoint silks until I really had decided what I was going to, how I was going to um, store them. So right now they're in this, project bag that I made and I hand dyed that background fabric to match the roses on here and then this is my floss bag. So number one, I'm not even going to attempt to count. I tried last time and I got lost right away. So you guys are going to have to help me count. So that's the first one. That's Scarlet House, Jane Cowie. Next up is another just gorgeous sampler. And this one I picked up at the attic when I was at summer school. And funny story, I had seen this. I had went through the line. So if you've ever go to summer school and like the first day that everybody's there, the line at the attic is a mile long and you're just, you're standing in a queue to kind of get through. Uh, as fast and wonderful as the ladies are, you know, there's only so much they can do. So I had been standing in line for a while. I had checked out, I had an armload of purchases. And I went and sat down at a little table uh, just over by where the checkout was. And I looked over and I saw this. And it's like, oh, that is so pretty. So um, this is by Wendy uh, of from the Heart Needle Art. And I said, oh, I have to have that. And I looked at it and it's like, I am not getting back in that line. It was hot and I was tired. And I think this was the day before the retreat. Yeah, I think it was the day before the retreat. And so we get to the retreat and we're sitting at a table and a couple of ladies come and sit down at a table. And I was going on and on and on about this chart and how I had to go back and how I had to kit it up and blah, 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 blah. What I didn't know was Wendy was sitting on our table because I hadn't met her. Um, and uh, she didn't say a word. So I don't know if she just, I don't, she didn't say a word. <laughs> I was so embarrassed um, after the fact that I had just went on and on. But I love this. The finished sampler is stunning. I saw it in person. So I did go back <clears throat> and I kitted it up in the silks. Aren't those yummy? I love silks because they just, they hang so nicely. So I kitted it up in the Gloriana silks that it calls for. And um, I was not able, there was a run on 36 count cocoa, weeks cocoa, which is what this is on. And um, I had to wait until it came. And that is my start on D Free Tag 1849. Even then, I think I had to come back and order a silk from Acorns and Threads. I think I had to order the blue. It's the only one I don't have untwisted. Yeah, I had to order this one. It's been a pretty blue. So. This is being done on 36 count cocoa, and I have it kitted in the silks. And I have it in this project bag, 
And there's um, this actually little needle bookcase is from Wendy. She gave them out to everyone at our table. So stays in the bag with the Wendy um, sampler. Next up are a couple of um, Blackbird designs. And the first one Whatever. ever, it's Oh Joyous Day. And I am doing it on 36 count oaken. And I just, the reason I think I did it at retreats, I kind of remember doing that. So that's a start. And that's a start. And I don't remember, I think, I think what happened is I started this and I started it the wrong direction that it was um it wasn't going to fit on the linen so i just turned the linen over and i started again so that's the only <laughs> only thing that i have on that and it shares a bag with another blackbird designs and that is because it's sharing oh here they are it's sharing a, a ring of floss because they use very similar floss so here's the floss colors, um, as many blackbirds do, they share the same colors. This is the colors. Aren't they gorgeous? It's going to be so pretty. I've seen this completed. It's going to be gorgeous when it's done. The next one that it shares the floss with, I just dropped it on the floor, so hold please. Okay, the next one up is Merrily, Merrily, We Welcome Spring. Yes, Merrily, Merrily, We Welcome Spring. I'm trying to hold these so that you don't get a glare because I don't want to take the time to take them all out of their protective sleeves. Also a very tiny start. I don't recall when I started this, but this is a very little bit that I have done. Again, they share the floss ring. So they're both in the same bag. And it's a bag, what did I do with the bag? I don't know what I did with the bag, but they're both in the same bag. So there's a couple of blackbirds. Next up are a couple that I started recently. The first one is Forever and Ever by Brenda Gervais of With Thy Needle and Thread. And I am doing the short version, the small version, which is this one. So it's basically this version, but the border is slightly different and all of the words are cut out. And this is my start. And it's going to be so pretty. I love this. It also has a, I have a shared ring here. I have them actually on separate rings, but um, there's some flosses that are shared. So this is the flosses that go, sorry, there we go. The flosses that go with this one. And I am doing this on a 36 count picture of this plus vellum. I'm doing both of these on the, the 36 count picture of this plus vellum, and they're the perfect color. The next one that shares the project bag with that is Every Opening Flower. That one came out this last market, I believe. And here is the ring for this. And this is my progress. I have about half of the border outlined and I've started filling it in. I have a needle in it, I see. Again, this is on 36 count. Picture this plus um, vellum. And these are gonna be hung together in the same room in the cottage bedroom, which is kind of why I have the yearn to start them. And I have been collecting in fact, I'm going to have to stop and show you this. I have been collecting fabric. This fabric line that I'm going to show you is from Laundry Basket Quilts. Hold, please. All right, let's see if I can show you this all at once. So here's the stitches. And here is the fabric line. I have two fabric lines. This one is Lady Tulip which is a fairly recent line. And then these are from another line that I have a fat quarter for that is on the way. And this one is from, oh shoot, I can't remember the name. Primrose, something like that. So I think these are the perfect colors. I think they're gonna go wonderfully. 
And these are intended to do quilts in the same bedroom. And then here's some of the creams that will be the backgrounds of the quilts. So those <coughs> are by Brenda Gervais. And they're in this project bag. I have several of these. I love this fabric. Next ones up are, is <clears throat> Butternut House Pen Keep. I'm not doing this as a pen keep. I'm doing this as a sampler and I have put it on a much um, larger fabric, a 30 count instead of a 36 count. This is being done with the called for floss, which is a DMC. And this is where I'm at. This one is going to be um, worked on real soon. I This is one that I would like to get done this October. Um, I have a companion piece that is Rose Cottage that's the same size, different colors. The Rose Cottage is for my maternal line that has my daughter, my granddaughter, my mother, and my grandmother. And this one will be done for my son and the paternal line. And that one is being kept in this beautiful William Morris black project bag. Okay, that's the first stack I've got. I'm gonna undo these so that we can look at these and put these others away. If I don't do that, everything will get in a big jumble and I don't wanna have to figure out which ring of floss goes with which project because I've done that before. Okay, we're on to another batch. This is the batch we just did. This is the batch we have to go. And next up is a big girl. I started this a long, long time ago. Um, this is Ann Dale, 1827, Big and Beautiful. And if you have not seen Lisa Kindred Stitcher's finish of this, you need to go check it out. It is gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. I am stitching mine on the called for Lakeside Linen Vintage Pair. That's my very teeny tiny start. And I have it kitted up with all of the called for floss. And there's a lot of it. I believe this is a 40 count. Yes, <clears throat> this is a 40 count vintage pair. And it is so pretty. That red on that green is just lovely. I had started stitching on it and I I didn't like at the time. This is when I first started stitching. I've come to, dif to appreciate color combinations that I'm not always thrilled with. But I didn't like how the leaves didn't show up on that. And I had set it aside and I haven't picked it up since. But now that I look at it, I think it's pretty. So, and Dale, big and beautiful. I don't know when I'm going to get back to her because I have a lot of other things that I am stitching on, but she is there in this project bag when I am ready to go. Um, next up, I'm just going to set this aside here. I'm doing these in small batches because otherwise things will go everywhere. I have this sitting on my ironing board. Um, <clears throat> and I don't want it to fall all over. Next up is Blair Gowrie. It is a With My Needle, which is an Ellen Chester reproduction. And this is so pretty. I fell in love with samplers. I did not have any samplers in my stash until I watched a video with Valerie Stitching in the Barn where she visited a neighbor of hers who also does redware, uh, the pottery type of redware, but she did a two-part tour of her house and all of the samplers that she had. And there were so many that I went out and immediately bought. This was one of them. Um, if I can, I'll look it up and if I can figure out what the, um, <clears throat> the episodes are, I will put it down below here. But again, Blair Gowrie, it is a Scottish sampler. And I am doing it in the needlepoint, called for needlepoint silks. I actually have these in floss away bags. And then I also put one on 
this is how I prefer to work. I prefer to work like this. So these may come out of the floss away bags and get cut. I don't have a huge start on this because this border is fiddly. So you've got a lot of those little curly cues all the way around the border, but that doesn't mean I don't love it because I do. And I am stitching this. I know it's a lakeside. This was... Oh, here it is. Good. Lakeside Vintage Pecan Butter in 40 count. And that's my start. Again, another one that I'm not really sure when I'm going to get back to it. Um, sometimes I just get a wild hair and I pick up something that I love um, and, and get going on it. I can't wait to stitch those, the rest of that border, not the curly Q part. <laughs> but it's going to be a while <clears throat> it, this this one's going to take a little bit of stitching because there's a lot of curly cues in those letters, which is what I love about Scottish samplers. Uh, the next one I started after I had first met Carol Saltbox Stitcher at retreat at, I think it was the very first farm girl retreat I went to, which was still called the Midwest Retreat. Um, which I believe was her first fall retreat. And I saw her stitching on this and it, I just, I fell in love with it. It was so pretty. And this is of course the Red Deer Sampler by GGR. And I'm stitching this on a 40 count vintage cedar plank. And here is my ginormous start. <laughs> This is one that I definitely will probably get a wild hair and pick back up. And I am doing it with um, a mixture of the called for and some Victoria Motto um, threads. So there we go. I really love this one. This is another one of my very favorite colors, this vintage cedar plank. And it's all housed in this project bag. The next one up is Ida Nolt Revisited. I think this was a reissuance of the original design, and this is by Hands to Work. This is my black and white um, working copy, so you can't really see what the color version looks like. But here is my color version. I am doing this using the called for DMC and I have the border done and I've started stitching on that middle flower. This one really needs something behind it so that you can see the true color of this linen. And this is a Weeks Dye Works Cappuccino. This is the old Weeks in a 30 count. This will hang in my living room because I love the arts and crafts look of the chart. So that is that one. Next up is Scarlet House, the Smith Sampler. And a lot of them that I'm showing you now are ones when I first started picking up uh, samplers and I just, I went crazy starting a bunch of them. So most of them don't have a whole lot of stitching on them. I am doing this on a vintage metal rue in 46 count. And I got stymied on this one because I was stitching it and I did not like the color of the star. What I had done is, uh, because I had so much Victoria Motto, I kitted this up and I did a conversion to Victor Victoria Motto, and I really wasn't happy with the green. So I stopped and I ordered the silks. I think there was like, um, yeah, this limestone, which is a Belle Swa, and there's a dinky dye here and something. And I think what I'm going to do when I do go back to pick this up is I'm going to actually kit the rest of it up. Put my um, my Victoria Mottos away, even though they're very pretty, and I'm gonna kit it up in the called for silks, which are, I think, mostly Belle Soie and Dinky Dyes. So 
that Scarlet House, 46 count. Um, what did I say? Vintage Meadow Rue? Yes, Vintage Meadow Rue. The next one up, and this is a contender. Um, I have a birthday coming up in October. And I, even though I've already restart, or started this, I may uh, call this my birthday start. And then I have another one that I may do a birthday start on, which I can talk about later. But this one is a Louisa Barney, 1892. And I am doing this in the called for Reflet de Soie silks. I ordered these from Kitten Stitcher a while back. She had the entire pack of the silks. So these are what are called for. And they come on the lovely cards. It's a very economical way uh, to get the silks for this particular. And I am doing this on a 50 count. I ordered 46, but it came um, as a 50 count. And this is, I think this is vintage Tundra or I'm not sure. I think this might be a vintage Tundra as well. And the reason I got stopped on this one was because it's actually goes this way. Uh, 50 count, you can see I counted it out and I was really struggling with the the count the 50 count was just a bit over the top for me um i think if i put it on scroll bars i'll be fine uh so i may do that I may put it on scroll bars stitch a little bit longer on that and see if that is going to work for me if it's not because i really want to do it on this color i will go and order myself a new piece of this um also the silks I think it would do better actually on a true 46 or a 50. You can see the silks are a little bit thick for this 50 count. So that is Louisa Barney. And I'm gonna button these back up into their perspective, respective um, project bags. And we're gonna go and do this next batch. And we're back for the last batch of what I have hanging up there. Now, don't think that that's everything because I actually have an entire oof, <laughs> box here of more that we're going to go through. This is this is really going to be a long video. I have no idea um, how long it's going to be, but um, you may want to do an intermission after this last batch and uh you know refill the glass and get a sandwich and and pick up your stitching and settle in because it's going to be a long one okay so next up is come to the garden by teresa Kogut, and i am stitching this um with annie of annie b's folk art we started it together I told Annie and I tell everyone, I do not do stitch alongs because I am terrible at them, but I am always willing to do a start along. So this is started. This is such a pretty stitch. I'm doing it on 40 count salt bush, which I think is probably my favorite color of fox and rabbit. And there is my start. And here are the gorgeous, gorgeous DMCs that it calls for. So I'm doing all the call for. And uh, it's really pretty. I have it in my bee bag because, you know, coming into the garden, it needs to be in a bee bag. Next, we have um, a Scattered Sea sampler. It is Mary Wood 1837. This one is so pretty. Um, I think I, does it only call for two? No, it calls for five, five different uh, colors of floss, but I only have two here because I'm using a conversion um, of my own. And what I have is the red and the green. And I am stitching this on a 45 count vintage Lakeside Linen Vintage Sand Dune. And here is my start. And this is going to be a gorgeous, gorgeous sampler. 
This one might get picked up if I'm in the mood to get something done. I, I used to look at these and say, oh, that's huge, it's gonna take me forever and feel kind of overwhelmed, but I know now that this is really not that big of a sampler compared to, well, actually, what does it say? It's 239 by 239. It's nothing to sneeze at, um, but it's gonna be very, very pretty. So Scattered Seeds, Mary Wood, 1837. The next one, I, I started these two together, um, is The Little Busy Bee by Needlework Press. It came out at market. It was, um, I don't remember what year, I think maybe 2020. Uh, it was definitely the first ones that I bought. And I'm doing this on a just gorgeous piece of um, fabrics by Stephanie. It's called Dried Thistle. It's a 40 count. This is the entire piece. And it just spoke to me when, when I found it, I bought it at the attic, but I am doing it on the top half and you probably, I won't get much of, of this into the sampler. I am doing it on the call for colors and I am working my way around the border. I generally do my borders in like quarters and thirds. Um, I've learned or at least what's works for me is I will do the border. I go back and double count and make sure everything's right. Then I start using them as landmarks to do motifs and then work my way around. That way, if I've messed up on the border, um, there's not so much to take out. But uh, And I do that for most, not every sampler, but for most samplers. So that's The Little Busy Bee by Needlework Press. And the next one, I really want to get back to this one. It's one of my favorites. This is a Chessie and Me, Sarah Casey Unwin, 1848. And I was inspired to start this one by um, Daisy K Primitives because when I saw it on her wall, it's just like, I have to get it started. I'd already had the pattern. I had just not had it kitted up. But I kitted it up with a Color and Cotton Havana. I started this at a girls weekend and I bought several color and cottons. This is one of the instances where I did do the skeleton of the border all the way around and I am doing it with the call for colors and yeah, this is a 36 count. And I love these colors on this linen. It's so pretty, I love this one. One of my favorites, but I have a ton of favorites. I have, I have lots of options to stitch on. Next up is a little Red House sampler. This was a retreat piece with Brenda Gervais. And it is a very, very pretty sampler. I have it started on a 40 count hand dyed linen that I hand dyed. Um, the linen started out as platinum and I don't, I don't have a huge start. I think I did this at retreat. Um, I over dyed it and these are most of the call for colors. Now, generally this lives in the same bag as the, the Brenda Gervais um, rose, Cottage Manor, Rose Cottage, Winter, Winter Rose Cottage Manor, uh, because they share a lot of the same colors, but these are the colors that work just for this particular one. Isn't that pretty? So that is a little red house. I actually think this is probably the direction it goes. And that's my start on that. And the next one is a blackbird. And this was a um, exclusive, I don't remember who it was an exclusive through, um, What Remains is Love. And I have this started, uh, hopefully I have that on there. I don't have that on there. I don't recall what the linen is. I do believe it's either a 40 or a 46 count it looks like it might be, 
I just don't know. If I find out, if I can look back in my book and figure out what color it is, I'll put that down below. But I'm doing that with the Call for Colors. And that's my start on that one. And that lives in this project bag. Okay, so I'm going to hang these back up. And then I'm going to pull out a big bunch of those there in the box and unzip them and debag them. And we'll get started on those. Okie dokie, I'm back. Um, took a little break, had some lunch, trimmed my bangs. <laughs> uh, this video is so long, I had to cut my hair in the middle of it. Um, I felt like it was growing by the sampler. So um, the next batch is things that are not in pretty bags. It's about maybe, maybe half of what I have in here. I just saw another one. Um, so I'm going to start with this one. What do I have in here? Oh, this is interesting. Uh, this looks like, oh, it's a blackbird. And this one definitely was one that, um, or actually there's two, uh, that we got at retreat when we went in 2019. And the first one was a small and it's um, called Home from the Sea. I'm just going to fold this over so you don't see the, um, the chart. Home from the Sea, Blackbird Designs. And this is what I have done on it. Just the corner of it. Let me look. Yeah, this is the corner, corner of it. Let me do this. And it's being done, stitched on the call for, which I think the call for was the same on both of these. And what is it? It was a new color at the time. And I don't know if it's listed here. Nope, this says it's a week's dye works. But it doesn't say what color. Oh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. The week's dye works is the floss, not the linen. The linen was new at the time it was it's vintage honey 36 count vintage honey and here are oops let me open it here sorry for the noise i tried to get them all out of the the bags but i just noticed that i had missed this one so this was a really cute little bag that we got at the retreat and here um, all of the linen care, all the linen, all the floss, <clears throat> words are hard sometimes. Um, all the floss came on this little ribbon. And so that's for the floss for, and this is actually the same, um, for this stitched piece. And the next one that I'm going to show you that I just dropped on the floor. And I have the teeniest of starts on the next one and that is we live in hope and of course both of these have been released since then and this was my little tiny start this is also the 36 count uh vintage honey next up is anna omen which is a leela studio and I started this near the beginning of the pandemic. And this is being stitched, I do not know. I think it's on a 40 or a 46 count because I'm stitching it with the Averisois Swasserfine. And this is my start. And I'm actually using two strands of the Swasserfine on this. So I think it's... I have to go back and my, look at my book. If my book tells me what the linen is, I will put that down below. It has come to my attention as I'm doing this that I really need to put a tag, go through these now that I have them all out, and put a tag on everything, like on the ring, the floss ring or something. Not only because it's frustrating to me and probably frustrating to you to not know what the linens are and the, the floss is, etc. But um, just two days ago, uh, there was another fire and it was just down the road. I mean, probably less than half a mile down the road. Now, we were super fortunate that 
it was put out after about three and a half acres. It was on one of the 40 acre um, pieces of property that's just down the road. I was sitting in the living room and I saw one emergency vehicle go by. Then I saw five sheriff cars go by, then the first fire truck. And so I went out on the porch and I think there were 10 fire trucks that went by. And when I saw a fire truck go by from out of the local district area, I knew that we were in trouble. And I walked over to the neighbor. The neighbor actually had more information than me. I mean, the fire had just started. And so it wasn't really even on our, our um, app that we have that let, alerts all the residents if there's a fire close by. But as I said, fortunately, they were able to put it out quickly. Um, and it just reminded me that it's not only important to kind of keep track just so when I'm doing my floss tube videos, but for insurance purposes, uh, the nice thing about the video is I can go back and um, aside from the list that I have online of what I have, but just trying to figure out how much um, I would need for insurance purposes for every single piece. I mean, you're thinking the chart and the linen and the the floss, et cetera. Um, you know, this adds up pretty quickly. And uh, it's nice to have it documented in, you know, what you have and what you have going. For insurance purposes, um, you know, they don't compensate you for anything above the value of the materials, but even that would be quite a bit. So this also helps for insurance purposes. So I need to, to track all of this and, and get that documented. Okay. Aside from that, uh, all's well that ends well. So grateful for our local fire departments who are always on top of things and we're able to get that put out. Next one up is called Peaceful Ways by Lottie Dot. And I looked right before I started the video back up to see if I could find the chart. Um, all I have is my working copy and I couldn't locate it quickly. So if I can find a picture online, I will put it in here really quick. But I know I'm doing this, I believe on a 46 count. Yes, a 46 count vintage metal rue. And this is my start. And it is a beautiful, beautiful little sampler. And I am doing this in a mixture of um, silks and DMC. And those are very pretty. So there's that one. Next up is, I'm going to be saying that a lot because I've got a lot to go, is Innocence 1840 by uh, Cross Stitch Antiques. And there is the sampler. I have seen this stitch. It is so pretty. And that border. Oh, that border is so pretty. I am stitching this on a 40 count picture. This plus dapple. I am doing it in the called for DMC. And this is my start. This is where I'm at. Just put in a few stitches on the flowers on that border. That is going to be gorgeous when it's done. A lot of my samplers, a lot of the stitching that I'm showing you um, now, I don't have specific places or I didn't at the time that I started have specific places in mind. Um, I just started all the things and I love to start things. I love the kidding up process. I love that whole uh, part of, of the project. Um, and I know I will definitely find places, but I'm starting to be a little bit more thoughtful. This last year, I've started to be a little bit more thoughtful because I've been concentrating on specific stitches that I know I want to put in specific places in my house. But that doesn't mean these others aren't loved because they are definitely loved. Next one up is a GGR and this is a Lady Jalet. I'm pretty sure I'm mispronouncing that, but uh, a lady Jalet 1892 GGR. And this picture just does not even come close. I believe that it was Reese 
Remember Reese? I wish that she would do another floss tube. It's been so long, Reese. We haven't seen you. I know you're probably really busy. But she had stitched this and I purchased this. And this is my start. And these are the called for colors. And I'm stitching this on a 40 count pearled barley. And it is so pretty. So, so pretty. Look at that rose. Um, this one will probably go into the French General Blackbird Design bedroom. And I'm trying to at least put those sort of back in the sacks. Next one up, um, this was a stitch that we received at the last Farm Girl retreat, which was a... Um, Lori Markovic from La Di Da. And this is one stitch at a time. It's really pretty. Um, these are the threads. And this is my start that I did at the retreat. And this is being stitched on. Oh, you know what? This is a hand dye from Michelle. And I don't remember what she called this, but if I look it up, I will put it down below here. Next up, we have Sarah Jackson. This is a Scarlet House. And I've seen this stitched as well. I think they had it up um, one of my visits to Country Sampler. And I think... I think I got this as a kit from Country Sampler and one of the, the kit series. This is being done on a 36 count weeks dolphin. And that's my start. And here's the called for loss. Dolphin is another fave of mine. I really like this color. Next up is a stitch I'm doing for my granddaughter. I don't think she watches my videos. I could be wrong, but if you do, Ryer, look away. Um, I don't think I have it documented. Oh, yes, I do. This is a 36 count flax, and um, the chart is called Note de Stelle. Again, I'm very certain I mispronounced that. It's a Madame Chantilly. And I think that would look perfect in any young lady's room. It's beautiful. And I love the poppies. And here is my start. I remember when I started this that it was going very quickly. It's one I really should pick up. Um, maybe for her next birthday. I need to get that done. And I'm using the call for DMC. DMC. These are the colors. Next up we have, uh, this is another retreat stitch that I started at retreat. And this is Samplers Remembered. It was summer school of 2021. And I'm pretty sure this has been released since. This is ER1821. Very lovely. I would suspect this is like a 40 count weeks beige. I'm just guessing though. Don't hold me to it. And there are the called for colors. This is another one where it's very small. I have, I don't know, maybe, maybe a third, a third done but it's, it's quite a, a, a small stitch comparatively. And I should just get it done so I can free up floss and space. And um, it's just, sleeping is overrated, <clears throat> but I can't function very well without it. So I'm just gonna have to figure out how to get all of this done. And for those of you who are curious, no, this does not stress me out in the least that I have a bazillion whips, not at all. I love it. I love going into my room and digging through them and just deciding what I'm gonna work on on any given day. So the next one is Jane Plenderleith, 1838. 
This was a kit from Country Sampler. Uh, School Girls, I believe. Yes, ABC School Girl Needlework Club. It's since been released. And this is my start. And again, I don't have the color right at hand, but I'm pretty sure that this is... Um, oh, shoot, the name now escapes are the call for floss. It's very pretty. I really like this one. Next up is, and that's Needlework Press, if I didn't say that already. Next up is <laughs> this linen. So I would go over to Lisa's house um, when we both lived in Washington. Now we're both in Oregon. I would go over to Lisa's house and, and she had this display in a, um, a drawer of an old treadle machine. And this linen was always there. And I would pull it out and I would fawn over it every single time. Um, mostly because I was studying it. I wanted to try and reproduce it uh, to dye because it's a birds of the feather uh, and the linen was called Too Many Treats and birds of the feather, of course, is not dyeing uh, fabric anymore. And then one year for my birthday, um, she gave it to me. So this is Buckleberry Welcome and it's a Rosewood Manor uh Karen Karen Kluba and this is you can see I started it a long time ago I've got threads hanging out here because I haven't really redone my my thread ring but these are the colors and I love this linen for any of you who have bought linen from me I haven't dyed in a long time I the linen I dyed that I could get as close as possible to this linen was called Redwood Forest I loved the color of this. I love the modeling. There's gold and brown and rust and green and just, it's so, so pretty. I really should get back to this one. It's one that I had planned on hanging um, in my home and it's not that big of a stitch. So I should get on that with all the others I have that I need to get on, right? So Buckleberry, welcome. The next one, um, this is a very popular, I don't, I don't know if it's been re-released or not. It's a Stacy Nash. This was gifted to me, I think it was the first or second retreat, um, uh, Midwest Farm, Farm Girl Retreat. This was gifted to me by Michelle and it's Cherry Hollow Farm Sampler and that's the little kit that it came with. And this is done on a... 36 count week style works beige and of course because it was the kit it was the linen and the floss all came together and that probably that way that's my start on it and I really do need to get this one done too it is such a pretty little sampler okay so there is all of the ones in the not pretty project bag so again going to pause and clean this up and bring out the last couple batches. Okay, we're on the home stretch. I debagged the last of the samplers and there's probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 left, I think. Next up is another scattered seed that I just love and it is the Katherine Dickinson 1810 sampler and I am doing this on vintage autumn gold lakeside linen one of my very favorite sampler colors and here let me just do it this way and I'm doing it in the called for floss and that's pretty true to color there we go the colors on this linen just sing they are so pretty um, this is not, again, a huge one, 135 by 131. This is one I really should just sit down, knock out, and get on my wall. I am have this housed in, I'm back to the pretty project bags, housed in this project bag with this floss um, bag as well. 
I love to make the project bags match my project. Um, even when I first started cross stitching, to me, that was the most fun, possibly because I felt sure about sewing, but I wasn't feeling sure about cross stitching. I have not been cross stitching that long. Um, I started in 2017, I believe. So that's that one. Next up after that is another favorite, La Di Da, Three Lilies. This is my working copy here. And here is my progress on that. Another one that will probably live in my living room because this matches here. Let me do this. This matches um, the colors in my living room, with her, which are very earthy, rust, burgundies, browns, blacks, sagey greens. So that is, and I think this one is a hand dye that I did. I'm not, I'm, I'm, well, I'm pretty sure it's a hand dye that I did. And this is one is called Burnt Brown Butter. And it is in this project bag. I don't know what I was thinking with that green, but I think it's, I was thinking I was trying to match the green in the, um, I hand dyed that green as well. Next up is Rose Quaker Sampler. So Carrie, who is Lisa's sister, has stitched this. It's framed on her wall. I've seen it in person. She inspired me to do this one. I have a very teeny tiny start. I'm doing this on a 40 count platinum. Or, no, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm doing this on a 40 count silvery moon. And this is my start. And these are the colors. This is such a pretty sampler. It is gorgeous. And I have it in this project bag, of which I also made a corresponding Mondo bag to put in it because I think it was when I was in the process of moving and I was at the other house and there wasn't a whole lot in the house except for my featherweight and some fabric. And I just had the urge to sew. And so I sewed until I sewed up most of the fabric. Next one up is a Scarlet House. And this is A Perfect World. It's a very pretty sampler. Lots of coverage down here. I have it kitted up in the called for colors. Looks like I need to unwind them and clean that ring up. And I'm doing this on, do I have it here? No, I know it's a lakeside. Maybe I have it on the, no, I would say that this is a meadow roo. And this is my small start. So yes, again, as I mentioned, there was a time period where I was starting all the samplers. And I have this in this really cute project bag and my pile just knocked over and I have a matching thread bag. So I'm gonna pause here because a bunch of stuff just went into the floor. I may have to do some sorting out. Um, it all just kind of dumped in a pile. So next up, one again of my favorite samplers. I love Carrie Chow slash Kathy Barrick things because she does so many things that really um, meld well with my arts and crafts decor. And one of them is this one and it's the Kingsford sampler. And it is so pretty. Um, when I first saw this, I think I saw it at the attic and I had to hunt and hunt and hunt to get the, um, to get the chart. But fortunately things like this are a lot more available now than they were then. And I'm doing this on a 32 count Lugung, or Lugana, words, Lugana, um, that was dyed by 
Exju Designs, and it's called Old Linen. I don't know if it's a linen that she constantly dyes. When I bought this, this is when she was first new. And that's my start. I love the color of this. I think it's going to look spectacular. These are the, the flosses, which I need to clean up. They're in a mess right here, but I think this is going to be so pretty on this linen. And am I doing that over one? No, no, I'm doing it regular. It's two over two. Yeah, I have it in this really cute project bag where I've got some squirrels. I think this is uh, ATG fabric. I really like this fabric. Okay, so hopefully I've got that all right back in the correct bag. Next up, I have a Blackbird design. It's Winter is Past. And I'm doing this. I don't remember if I got this as a kit. It's quite possible that I did. And it's being stitched on 36 count oaken. And that's my tiny little start. And here are the colors. I'm not necessarily a blue person. There are certain colors of blue that I like a lot. Um, usually for me, it's um, something you call like a London blue topaz is the color I like. But blues like this, I like blues like that. So that is a teeny tiny start on that. And I have this in a William Morris slash French labeled bag. And the next up, is this one of them that fell? Yes. Um, where's the chart? Here it is. Next up is a long dog. It's Hoity Toity. Lisa and I started this at the same time. I think this was my very first birthday start when I first started cross stitching. Lisa, of course, is finished. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> I don't even have the first row done, but I love this stitch and I will pick it up and I will finish it. Um, I'm doing it in the called for DMCs and this is being stitched on, um, I think it's a tin roof and I believe it's a 30, 32 count. That's kind of what's holding me back is when I first started stitching, I could barely see to stitch a 28 count and then 32 was a move up. And then of course I stitch on 40 and 46 now, but I think I will finish it in this. Um, since I don't have that much done, I may actually just go back and get a 36 count and do it over one, but I haven't decided. I mean, there's really not a whole lot of that um, already stitched, so we'll see. Next up, again, this is part of what fell down. Um, I don't have the chart in front of me, but you all know it. It's called the Needle Worker. And oh, I keep dropping things. Hold one. Hold please. Okay, I misspoke. I do have the chart in front of me. Um, this is a little house needleworks called the Needle Maker. And I first saw this done on um, hedgerow stitching. She had stitched it. And it's like, oh, that is so pretty. And she had stitched it in um, a very um, tweedy, homespun looking linen. So I went and found... I went and found, what did I get? This is a 32 count natural. Um, I probably bought it at Joann's or something and then I coffee dyed it. So this is a 32 count linen and I coffee dyed it. I don't have a lot started, but I do know it's gonna be so pretty. And these are the called for colors. That red is just gonna pop out on there. So a uh, little house needle worker and I have it in this bag, one of my favorite bags. And again, it has, I like, I like fabric with words on them. 
This one, I don't recall what designer that was, but it has like a log cabin. It has quilting things on it. And then this is the back. I think that's another ATG fabric. And then this is the pull. Okay, I think I'm close to getting everything sorted back into where it needs to be. I think, put that over there. Um, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Oh, this is the, I'm back to Hoity Toity. Hoity Toity, these are the colors. And this is the project bag for Hoity Toity. I had a piece of, um, what would I call that? A brocade. It's very pretty. I gave it a lot of bling. Sometimes you just gotta have fun. And this is, see, I even put braid on that one. That's the, the floss. Okay, so there's Hoity Toity. Don't count that one twice. Gotta keep track. Next up, I have Hannah Tingy or Hannah Tingy. Nobody's ever really decided which is the appropriate pronunciation. 1823, this is the Scarlet House. I bought this at the attic where I saw the original, not the original original, the reproduction original. And I don't know if it calls for DMC or if I just kitted it in DMC. Regardless, I'm doing it in DMC. I have a very tiny start, but I'm doing this on a 40 count vintage buttercream. And these are the called for floss. It is very, very pretty. This buttercream is yummy. I have a fat half here, so I need to at least get the border done so I can cut off the rest and have that available for something else. I have that housed in this project bag. That has, also has a matching um, floss bag. And then the interior of this, it's a tone on tone, but it's French something. Very pretty. Okay. This is the last one. Uh, next up is a Brenda Gervais. It's Birds of the Feather. I have it started on, I think this is a 36 count. I'm pretty sure it's the call for 36 count weeks gray. There's my start. And I'm doing it with the called for weeks dye works floss. And those are the colors. And have it in this part of back. Okay. Well, that's all of my sampler whips. Again, this is part two. And um, I'm going to pause one more time and put everything back in their bags. I'm going to think about what kind of giveaway I can do if you would like to count up all the whips from today, today's video and last time's video, which was a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'll put the number down here. I don't remember what number it was. Um, so if you add them all up, that should be all of my whips. Uh, to date, I can tell you that I'm going to be starting some new things and I have some tentative fall plans which I'm going to share in just a minute. Uh, tentative because I always change it up and you just never know what I'm going to pick up and start between now and then. So one more pause and I'm going to put this away and I'll be right back. So here is what I've decided. I will would like to give away a $25 gift certificate to 123 Stitch. Um, I chose them because that is a, a company that will ship most places. I'm not sure what their overseas shipping is, but um, I thought 
felt that was the easiest. So here's the deal. You need to have counted up the whips that I had from last video. Again, I'll put the name of it or the, yeah, the video number down here and this video. And from all of the correct answers, I will choose a winner using the random uh, comment picker generator thing. And uh, you must be over 18. You must not put giveaway in your comment, uh, which I'll tell you what to comment on in a minute. Uh, you will be sending me your address um, and you must be a subscriber, a public subscriber. And I do check. So if you would like, would be interested in that gift certificate, go ahead and tell me what your, out, out of everything that I showed, what your favorite stitch was, your favorite whip. It doesn't matter if it was a sampler or one of the smalls or anything that I showed in either video. Um, that's what I would like you to tell me what your favorite one was. And I will put you in the running for that gift certificate. Last but not least, I have some plans. As I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, I am, I'm done with long hot days. I am ready for fall. I am really ready for fall stitching. I'm going to be shifting out of the summer stitching that I've been doing. I, I may do a little bit more, but you'll probably see fall stitching in the next video. Along with that, I have some plans. Um, one that I know I'm going to be working on is, let's see, where, where did I put it? This one. And I think I said that when I showed it. I'm going to be working on this one, and this will be a focus piece for me to finish. I'll be working on Jack's Bash, and I will probably be focused on uh, Turkey Hollow Farm as well, which I believe I showed in the last video. I also have a bunch of smalls. Um, I think that's going to be kind of my sort of tentative plan going forward. I might focus on one or two bigger pieces, medium or, or larger pieces, and then I really want to get a bunch of smalls. So I have some. I have a bunch I already need to finish. I mean, that are stitched but need to be finished. I also need to work on that. But here's some possibilities of things that I'm going to be working on. Some of them are stronger possibilities than others. The first one I'm going to show you, um, you can get this as a PDF download from the Humble Stitcher. And it is called Indian Corn. This is my printed out PDF. Now, the reason that I want to do this one is that the last two fall farm girl retreats, somebody stitched this and made it into a drum. And I just loved it. It was so cute. So I'm going to figure out whether I'm going to do a 36 or a 40 count because they were tiny little drums. And I will be stitching it on the called for, um, with the called for DMC. Very pretty colors. Probably a, a lighter linen, um, not so modeled. Uh, the contrast is what I'm looking for on this one. I had to pause there for a second. I had floss tube, itchy nose, and a dry throat all at the same time. Okay, um, next up in no particular order uh, of some possibilities to stitch. These are all something that are fairly small. This is a Brenda Gervais on pens and pumpkins, and it is this long skinny pumpkin. Super cute. And this has uh, been a longtime favorite that I've wanted to stitch, and it's where the bittersweet blooms. Brenda Gervais again. Um, I had, I think, August play in somewhere in the whip parade, <clears throat> and I would also like to do October and November whip play. This one, it would probably be the smaller pink keep, um, and it's called One for the Crow. Again, it's a Brenda Gervais, this one right here. That one's adorable too. This one is Stacy Nash, Cast Your Spell Pink Keep. Um, back to Brenda Gervais. 
<clears throat> I believe I got this at one of the Farm Girl Retreats, Souvenirs of the Heart, um, Autumn and Amana. I think that was the first one that Brenda did. And this is available. So next up I have um, a little stack here of things, stitches from like just Cross Stitch Magazine or online. So I'll share those and tell you if I can where they're from. <clears throat> this is a possibility. It's just, it's from Just Cross Stitch, October 2018, Pumpkin Needle Book. Uh, next one up is Pinker and Pumpkin. Uh, if you have not followed Pinker and Pumpkin, you need to probably follow her Instagram. Uh, she also has a Pinterest called Pinker and Pumpkin, P-I-N-K-E-R-N, P-U-N-K-I-N. She does the most adorable salt boxes. So this is her autumn salt box. And this is Aunt Mariah's autumn salt box. Not a very good picture, but it's really cute. Um, some of the, and hers are free. Everything's free. She has a ton of salt boxes. Um, I'm going to flash this one because I don't have a picture of it and it is free. But please go to her, um, her Instagram, her blog, or her Pinterest. And here is that information. I will hold that up for a while. She is delightful. And she does so much um, free stuff. It's it's wonderful that what she does for the community. Really quick, says 1863. This one is Thanksgiving House. <clears throat> and again, it's free. Um, this one is 1803 Autumn House. Very cute. Super, super cute. That one's definitely one that's going to go on the list. Um... This next one is Fall 1869 Croc. Do I have a picture of it? I do not. So again, I'm just gonna flash this real quick so you get an idea of what it looks like. There we go. <clears throat> go to her site. And uh, oh, here's another salt box that I don't have a picture for. All I have is the chart. It's Turkey Creek Manor. Quick flash. These are all salt boxes. And then... Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. Uh, there's another one. I'm just going to name it. You're going to need to go look at it. I don't have a picture. And I have the chart, but it's black and white. So it's not really going to give you a good thing. But it's 1821 Sunflower House. Pinker and Pumpkin. And then another one that I'm going to flash. This is a candy corn house. And then the last one that's a possibility is from another Just Cross Stitch, October 2018. And that one is October 31st. So those are all possibilities. I will not get to all of them. I will get to a few, but the um, Pinker and Pumpkin 1821 is high on the list, as is the Autumn House and one or two of her salt boxes. And then this one, this looks like a an hour stitch or something. So I'm looking for a lot of smalls. Okay, <clears throat> so I think that's all for today. Um, I hope to be back within two or three weeks. I have, um, as I mentioned, Lisa's going to come and hang out with me uh, for a week or so. And my son is still here. And, you know, we're just kind of wrapping, wrapping up summer and heading right into fall. So I hope to see you soon. Thanks for stopping by. I really hope you enjoyed this um sampler whip parade and last videos whip parade as well i hope you found something that inspired you if you have any questions about anything that i've showed please feel free to drop a comment down below and i would super appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to this channel so you can see what i have to show you next 
Um, I will be doing, uh, ho hopefully get those quilts quilted. So I'll be showing those and maybe something else. I have three quilts planned for the cottage bedroom. Um, <clears throat> I have two of them already kitted up and one where I will be getting a jelly roll to um, to start and I hope to get started on those. They all look to be fairly simple, but I always say that and they always take longer than I think, but they're all with uh, fig tree fabric. So I think they'll be darling for the, the cottage bedroom. And um, I think that's all I have for now. So goodbye until then. Happy stitching. Bye. Thank you.